Hello everyone and welcome to our second session for Ask the Experts for Disk Storage, Core Compute and Networking. It's a pleasure being over here with you, with all of you. We are coming to you from all over the world in order to give you a better experience for Ignite and connect with you better. Um, before we get started, uh, we're going to be explaining some of the things about how are we going to be running this session. So let me go to the next slide. So first of all, you're going to have a chat window. Use that chat window to ask us all the questions. Um, we will uh, be monitoring all the questions and then publishing them. Um, whatever you see that is something that you're interested in, please do the upvoting so we can gauge the level of interest on the different questions. And we will have two ways so far responding to you. The first one is going to be directly on the chat window, but then also we're going to be selecting some of the more most voted questions so that we can also answer them on camera. And so um, before I introduce you to our wonderful speakers over here, just a few more things. This session is going to be recorded and um, a little bit of help for our moderators. Uh, let's make sure that whenever you are asking anything, uh, make sure that there's not spam. You're focusing on some of the questions so that we can have a better session for everyone. Um, the next next ask for you is that you uh, follow the Microsoft Code of Conduct, which I'm going to show you now, and I'm going to give you a few seconds so that you can read through it. OK. And with that said, uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Cristina Delamo. I am a principal program manager in the Azure Compute team, and I'm going to be moderating this, uh, this session. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is to introduce you to the four experts that will be answering the questions on camera. Uh, first, Shantanu Srivatsava is the principal program manager in the Azure Compute team. Mayank Nayar is the Senior Program Manager in Azure Compute. We also have VJ Tandra that is uh, joining us from the Azure Storage and Backup team. He's the Principal Program Manager in that team. And also Nibi, who is the Senior Program Manager in the Azure Networking team. And what you don't see on camera, but we also have over here helping us a lot, is a number of other Microsoft employees and MVPs that are going to be monitoring the chat and answering all the questions. So my thank you to all of them for all the help that they provide. And with that, we're going to be going to the questions. I'm going to get started with some of the questions that we had from this morning. We had a session this morning already or earlier today, I would say, or maybe yesterday, <laughs> earlier yesterday, and uh, there were a few things that we couldn't cover during that session. So just to make sure that we are doing the best we can uh, to cover all the questions, we'll be starting with some of those ones. And then after that, as the things warm up, we will uh, move to the questions that we are seeing on the chat window. OK, so my first question, is going to be going to uh, to Vini, OK? So we had a question this morning in relation to the difference between the global load balancer that was announced today, uh, the global load, load balancer that works cross region, and also the Azure front door. So can you tell us more about what one does versus the other, Vini? We maybe have a technical problem with Vini, so what I can do is to um, maybe when she gives me a signal later, I can go back to her. And then for the time being, uh, let's go for another question that we had this morning. Um, so this next question Hello, is going you. to go. Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me all right? Now we can hear you, Vini. Let's go. Let's go with Hello? that previous question, and then later on we can continue with PJ for the next questions. Do you want me to repeat the question? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I am so sorry for that. Let me go back to the uh, other question until she can solve the technical problems there. Um, so, PJ, the next question is going to go to you. 
Uh, can you tell us uh, whether there is an ETA for when ultra disks will be supported by the Azure backup and site recovery system? Vinny, to you. Yeah, hey, uh, thanks, uh, Christina, for the question. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear awesome. you. Awesome, cool. Uh, so uh, on ultra disk, um, uh, we've been in GA for, for a while now uh, for the ultra disk capability itself. Uh, but then if customers need a way to back up the data in the ultra disk uh, or have a disaster recovery solution, they can leverage uh, the guest based solutions to do backup and you know replication. Uh, for instance, if you're deploying your uh, VM uh, to run your SQL servers inside a virtual machine and you have your, your data is sort of sitting in an ultra disk for low latency use kind of usage. You can always use the SQL backup uh, for uh, you know IaaS VMs that's already built in, right? Um, similarly, if you're looking for a HANA uh, DB that's running in a ultra SSD uh, sitting inside the guest, um, you can turn on HANA backup to do uh, Azure backup for HANA DBs will give you the capability to do backup. So that's something that is available today as well. Right, uh, and then there are uh, a lot of third-party solutions like from Commvault, uh, you know that, that and then others uh, that are, uh, you know, providing capabilities to back up, uh, you know, the workloads that are running inside the virtual machine, much like the SQL and HANA examples I talked about. Right, what we are working on indeed is that uh, how do a snapshot, um, you know, ultra SSD from outside the VM as a platform capability. That's the one that uh, you know we don't have today, and that's something that we're working on, and uh, we expect to have an update sometime early next year. So that's kind of the uh, plan that we are working towards, uh, both for Azure Backup and for Azure Site Recovery. Thanks, Christina. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you very much. So um, the next question is going to go to Mayank. Mayank. Uh, many of our customers are very cost conscious and we heard today that there were um, some improvements for spot VM that can really help some of the customers to use Azure at the lowest possible cost. So can you tell us more about Azure uh, spot VMs and then also what are the latest capabilities? Sure, Christina. Uh, great question. And uh, yes, saving on cost is really uh, important, especially if you're running, you know, very big workloads. So spot VMs, customers can choose to deploy VMs on the excess and unused capacity of an Azure region. We usually have you know, additional capacity for customers that would want to scale out. So if you time it right, you can save up to 90% of the on-demand cost of a running VM, you know, which is tremendous savings, right? Uh, so we made tremendous improvements also with some new features that we've recently introduced. Uh, so with Spot VMs, we're also now providing you the history of uh, the last 28 days of the pricing. Uh, we're also giving you a better visibility onto the eviction probability. So you can mix and match the right Azure region, the right uh, uh, VM size and the timing to figure out what is the best price for you. So if you have uh, a workload that yeah, can tolerate interruptions, like you're doing uh, potentially like a batch processing uh, job, uh, so you need a lot of compute, but you might not need it right now. So you can choose to deploy it at a time when your costs are really low, leverage the best possible uh, pricing from spot and really save on that you know, bottom line bill that you get. That sounds great. I'm sure that many people are going to be very interested in using that and reducing their cost to a lot, a fraction of what they have now for some of the workloads that allow for that type of behavior in, in spot VMs. Great. So um, it seems that we may have now Vini back on uh, online and I don't want to have people hanging out there. So Vinny, can you confirm that you can actually hear us now? I can, yes, and sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> no, perfect, that's actually that's actually great. So Vinny, um, this morning we heard that there is a global load balancer that can be used uh, across regions and there were some questions about how does it compare to some other solutions that we have out there? 
like so for example between that and Azure front door. So um, is that something that you can tell us a little bit more about so that people know what to use when? Uh, sure, uh, sure. So let me start by talking about application front door, which is basically a, a, a layer seven load balancer, which means this is the top layer, HTTP layer. And apart from load balancing, it also has uh, lots of other cool stuff that it can do. Uh, there are acceleration abilities, uh, which just makes your application uh, super fast and everything. Uh, now going and talking about the global load balancer and the standard load balancer that as well, right? Now those load balancers operate at layer three and layer four, right? That is the TCP and UDP uh, layer. So they are agnostic to the application protocol that you use, which means that they are super useful if you have gaming applications or financial applications or stuff like that, right? So uh, you would use that if, if that's what you're gunning for. And apart from that, there are also other cool abilities uh, related to, uh, you know, source IP, etc., that you can uh, use in the global load balancer, which are specific to layer three. So um, I hope that you guys go and try the solution out and let us know your feedback. Uh, we'd be happy to hear from you. Sounds good. And uh, I am seeing actually there is a follow up questions for spot VM, so it seems that a lot of people are interested in uh, saving some of the saving some money. So the question specifically is going to go to my young again, uh, and the question is whether there is some information about how to see the eviction rate for spot VMs. So my young, do you think you can give a little bit of information about that? Sure, yeah, and, and this is a new feature that's been recently introduced. Uh, it's, it's in preview and you can go check it out. So when you go to the Azure portal, you can select the uh, for the spot billing model. You can see uh, a history of 28 days of the pricing as well as also get information on uh, the eviction probability. Again, there are no guarantees uh, because spot is basically giving you the unused capacity. So if we do need uh, that to use that capacity, then you might be evicted, but you'll get a better handle on what is the probability of uh, of eviction for you. So you can you know, sort of have some uh, predictability around it and uh, better manage when to use versus when to use on demand. Sounds great. Um, thank you so much, Mayank. And it seems also that people are having a lot of interest on, uh, on the backup features and the backup and restore features. So the next question is going to go to you, VJ. Uh, when will it be possible to backup a single data disk instead of the entire VM that includes the OS disk? Yeah, thanks, uh, Christina, for the question. This is a great question. Uh, we have heard customers ask about this, uh, so I'm very happy to talk about the new capability we just announced uh, today uh, that you can actually do selective disk backup. Um, so you can, as a customer, you do not have to back up the entire virtual machine. That's what we used to have before this announcement. Now you can choose either the OS disk and then the configuration of the VM, or you could select just any individual data disk that is connected to the VM and say, I want to back that up, right? Uh, this is very useful for customers who say, uh, you know, they have a standard OS image that they don't need a backup for, and they just need to back up their data, which is critical to them. Uh, they can deselect OS disk and just back up the data disk. Um, so this way they can not only kind of be selective about what they back up, and more important is that they can save some costs by not having to keep copies of all the redundant OS disks that they may have in their environment. So, so this is a great capability. Please do check it out. Um, I think there's a response in the in the uh, chat window on where to go find more information. Uh, please look at the announcements. Uh, thank you, Christina. Thank you, VJ. And uh, we're going to change gears a, a little bit, spice the whole thing up. Um, and my next question is going to go to Shantanu. Um, some people in the audience Santanu may not be as familiar with dedicated host. Um, so I wanted to see if you could explain a little bit about what's dedicated host and then also what are the latest capabilities that we have that were also announced uh, in the past uh, in the past day. Santanu, going to you now. Uh, thanks, Christina, for the question. Uh, so dedicated host is uh, 
uh, is the capability where uh, the entire physical host machine is dedicated to one customer, hence the name dedicated. So uh, all the VMs uh, that are placed on that uh, particular host machine will belong to one customer. So where it will help is uh, for compliance reason, if you need isolation or uh, uh, it gives you full control over the maintenance cycles and VM placement, as well as uh, it helps you reduce cost for software licensing. So bring some of the Azure hybrid benefits uh, where Windows Server and SQL Server uh, licensing cost can be saved if they are uh, based on uh, CPUs or host machine. Now, there are some new capabilities that we are bringing in Azure dedicated host as well, uh, with, which helps with VM placement. So there is a concept now called dedicated host group uh, where you can target a dedicated host group for your VM placement and the platform will decide on which particular host machine inside that dedicated host group uh, your VM will be placed. And then another new capability that we are bringing in is uh, virtual machine scale set support on dedicated host. Uh, so with these new capabilities, uh, I, we will be really uh, providing, I mean, the full isolation with the dedicated host as well as the normal scaling capabilities that come into uh, Azure with the virtual machine scales, et cetera. Uh, thanks, Krishna. Sounds pretty exciting to me. So um, hopefully other people are finding that the same. So we continue to see actually a lot of interest in this session on the backup and restore functionality. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have another question uh, for, um, or at least a follow-up question for uh, for BJ actually. Um, so BJ, can you tell us a little bit in more detail the how to do the backup for a single data disk instead of a, an entire VM that includes the OSDs, but just go a little bit more in detail on, on how are some of the steps and what are some of the, the kind of like the, the um, types of hard disk that we have. And I know you have been uh, answering this question, but it seems that there's people that are more interested in learning a little bit more in depth, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, but thank you, Christina. This is a great topic. So I think um, in terms of disks, um, you know, we do have different uh, class of disks and for different purposes. Uh, so what I talked about just earlier was yeah. uh, a general purpose, uh, you know, premium SSD or a standard SSD, uh, you know, uh, you know how that works with that. Um, I know I know customers have been asking about ultra SSD, which we just responded earlier, but there's a question about you know, this exclude this capability. Does that work with ultra disks, right? And how does that these two kind of can I can I exclude the ultra disk from my selected set of disks that I want to back up, right? Uh, the unfortunate answer for that is no, not of today, uh, not as of today. Uh, we are looking at how do we bo um, two two things here. One is to enable backup of an ultra SSD. That's that's one thing I did talk about in the first question. Second is um, if the customers do not want to back up the ultra SSD, uh, this case, this announced announcement that we just made, uh, you, it works for like premium SSDs and standard SSDs and standard HDDs. It does not work for uh, ultra SSD, unfortunately, uh, but that's something that we will be looking into. So that's that's one thing I want to call out. There's a second sort of question I saw that came in was, hey, how does this all work in shared disk context? Uh, because shared disk is another one that we sort of announced. And the concept of shared disk is uh, when you have a sort of a Windows, let's say a Windows failover cluster uh, that you want to set up two virtual machines or maybe N virtual machines uh, sharing the same disk for, you know, writes, you know, it could be single writer, multi reader or multi writer kind of scenarios, right? So that's the kind of concept of a shared disk, right? Um, so that is another one that uh, we're working on and how to enable backups for shared disk um, again in case of shared disk as well you can use guest based backup solutions as of today so for example if you are running a sql server in a windows failover cluster you can use the azure backup server to back up uh, those kinds of environments um, uh, but if you need just a raw disk backup right which is not connected to the application it's agnostic to the application uh, that is an update that we, we should have uh, later, you know, you know, later on, I don't have a date uh, when we'll have support for just a raw disk, uh, shared disk, uh, you know, snapshots. 
uh, but that's something that is that is something we're working on. So, uh, so those are the sort of the aspects that I saw some questions come come by on like uh, from the chat window. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks for. Yeah. Thank you for confirming on what's the situation with Ultra SSD because that seemed to be uh, the the key of where exactly it was usable or not. So my next question is going to go to Vini. Um, we just received this one in chat recently. How would you recommend to deliver DNS server service to hybrid network on premises with uh, Azure Private Link? Sure, I think uh, what we are talking about in this question is a uh, conditional forwarding feature. That is the that is the specific one which is for Azure private DNS and uh, that particular feature is currently on the roadmap. And once you do that, uh, once the feature gets available, you will be able to forward your DNS queries, uh, uh, you know, between on premises and Azure. So that would be uh, possible. Uh, but right now we don't have a solid uh, EDA. Uh, do note that that feature is independent of private link, so you will be hearing uh, about that from us, but uh, will not be directly linked with private link. And I think it's coming from Kenneth and, and a few other people. So I hope I've answered your questions and uh, and wait for wait for it. Stay tuned. Thank you, Vinny. That's great. Looking forward to that. So um, I have a question from another session today that we also want to answer just to introduce a different topic. Um, the topic is on uh, live migration, so I'm going to be redirecting that to Shantanu. So Shantanu, uh, for the live mig when we do live migrations in Azure, um, can customers see that that happen? Is there a place where they can go and verify that the live migration uh, happened? And maybe you can even talk about some of the cases in which we initiate live migration for the VMs. Uh, thank you, Christina, for the question. Uh, so live migration, uh, we use it a lot uh, in Azure platform uh, for scenarios where uh, we are predicting some hardware failure. So we have machine learning models uh, running on our platform where we detect uh, which hardware is going to fail uh, in let's say uh, next seven days, five days, whatever the time frame is. And based on that, we preemptively migrate the running virtual machine to another healthy host machine uh, with a very small blip uh, during blackout. Uh, so this is uh, what we do is we copy the uh, running VM with the memory, with the disk, as well as with the connection, uh, but uh, with a small blackout period. Uh, and uh, this helps uh, maintain the availability of the virtual machines, even when the underlying hardware fails. And customers can see uh, those events if any live migration happens in the resource health as well as the activity log. Uh, it will clearly call out that uh, live migration happened on the uh, or for this particular virtual machine. Thank you. Sounds good. So, um, um, there was another uh, interesting announcement today, uh, and that was related to how customers can do better management for their VMs. So the next question is going to go to Mayank. Um, Recently, as I said, we announced that uh, for customers that are using VMSs, they can have a much better control on how to update the OS in their machines and how can they improve the security on their side. So can you explain more how this functionality works, some of the advantages, and just get a little bit everyone up to speed on that one? My so for you. Yeah, uh, sure, Christina. Thank you. So this, this technology is called Virtual Machine Scale Sets Automatic OS Upgrades. And, and this is really a, a cloud native way of doing upgrades. So uh, if, if you talk about a non cloud native way, uh, if you release a new uh, image version to your deployment, you'll have to stack that deployment. You'll have to do a whole bunch of scripting, see the health, respond to it. So a lot of manual efforts are required for it, uh, and, and that might leave your security compliance in, in a bit of a questionable state if you don't have the right resources uh, to manage that complicated environment. So we've simplified that entire process for virtual machine scale sets with automatic OS upgrade. So you don't need to do any of that scripting yourself. You don't need to do any of that health monitoring. Azure does that for you. So for example, if you have a new Ubuntu image released or if you have a new Windows Server 2019 image released or you know lots of supported images we have already today as well as support for custom images. So you just need to turn on this feature called automatic OS upgrade and then whenever a new image version is released, 
Uh, Azure is going to go to your scale sets. It's going to update your VMs to this new image version by replacing your existing OS disk with the new OS disk that we create from this new image version. And all of this is automatic, and it's not just the beauty of automation here. Uh, it's, it's also safety checks built into this process. So as we go across your scale sets, we are ensuring that we update the virtual machines batch by batch. So at never more than 20% of your scale set is updated at any given point in time. And we also monitor the health of your virtual machines before and after upgrade. So if, if there's a bad image version that gets deployed to your environment, you know, it could be something wrong with the image itself. It could be your application does not work correctly with the new image uh, components. Uh, so we are checking the health of that VM post uh, that image replacement. Uh, so, and in case your VM turns out to be unhealthy, we'll automatically give back your previous OS disk on it because we're not thrown it away. We'll be still retaining it and rollback is automatic. So lots of safety checks built into this. So if, if you know security compliance is top of mind for you and everybody needs to have security compliance top of mind, then this is the solution for you. And what we've introduced now is better control over when these updates happen. So we are already doing these updates in a staggered fashion. I mentioned the batch by batch upgrades, but now you also have control over the exact timing of when this update happens. So for example, you want to ensure that the update only happens during off peak hours, uh, something like 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. for you. You can specify that with the new maintenance control feature for virtual machine scales that automatic OS upgrade. This is a new feature that we've just launched in preview today. Uh, so yeah, go try it out. Sounds great. Um, looks like a good thing to use. So we have a new question for VJ as well. Again, it seems that the backup service is of uh, a lot of interest today. And so the question is whether it will be possible to interact with the backup service via API. Yeah, thank you, Christina, for the question. Um, I think there are two parts to the question. Let me uh, kind of uh, go into the question. So one at a fundamental level, uh, um, you can interact with the Azure Backup Service uh, through SDK. Um, so we do have um, the Swagger as well as we have the um, PowerShell CLI uh, uh, and then REST API interfaces to uh, interface with the backup functionality, whether it is configuring backup, whether it is monitoring the backups, whether it is uh, restores, uh, looking at your entire estate, uh, how it is performing, all of those things are available through the REST API as well as the uh, CLI and uh, you know PowerShell. Right? So that's that's the question number one. There's a related question on how can I do a single item restore uh, from within a VM? Um, so that process is not automatable as of today. Uh, so what you have to do is basically, uh, uh, you know, you need to download that agent um, that will allow you to connect the agent to the virtual machine, uh, download the file that you want, and then uh, you know copy it wherever you need to do, right? So that that whole process is uh, you know a guest to guest communication. So that's not something that uh, an external um, you know Azure entity can kind of manage that. Uh, but that said, you can invoke that session to create a session where you can do the mount. It takes you all the way up to that point of creating a mount point for you as a customer, but then how you browse the files, how you pick a file from the folder and then copy it wherever you need to do, that gets into the Windows Explorer or the Linux uh, you know, file system. That is the part that cannot be automated through and through the Azure backup service, but you need to log into the uh, virtual machine and then you can use your own scripts uh, if you know what kind of uh, what kind of data you're looking for and how to uh, kind of copy that to the environment where you want to recover the data. So, so those are the two, two parts of the question. Thank you so much. And our session is coming to an end, but I was getting a request to have one last question. So this last question is going to go to Mayank. Uh, we have an announcement today about uh, Azure Hybrid Benefit. And so maybe quickly over here, you can just uh, give a quick uh, a summary of uh, what this and then how people can use it, like a quick recap, and then we will wrap up after that. Mayan, can you take this? 
Sure, Christina, and I'll keep this quick. Uh, so Azure Hybrid Benefit is a very powerful feature again uh, for customers who want to save on cost. We've had this now uh, for a while for Windows, and today we've also launched this in preview for Red Hat and, and SUSE Linux server on Azure. So uh, you can bring your own licensing. You can also uh, preserve those special pricing discounts that you have, so you don't need to pay uh, double the price you know, when you move from on-premises to Azure. So again, lots of benefits for saving on cost on Azure. Sounds great, and uh, as I said, we're coming to an end. So uh, with this, we have to wrap up. Any more information um, you can see in the screen, the resources that um, you can use. Thank you so much for being with us today and keeping up with our technical difficulties and keep tuning to other upcoming Ignite sessions. I'm sure that you're going to be enjoying and we enjoy having you in any of them. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks everyone.